afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the inaugural Concise Conversations with Kathy and Jackie. My name is Dakota Punzel, and I'm the Programs Coordinator here at the Alabama Best Practices Center. I'm so glad that y'all are here with us today. So what is Concise Conversations? Well, let me, let me show you some cool little graphics to go along with what I have to say. So this is Concise Conversations with Kathy and Jackie. Um, I'm going to let Kathy talk a little bit more about what inspired this idea and what we're trying to get done here. Um, and I also wanted to introduce our first guest, which is Allison Carpenter from Athens City Schools. So thank you for being here with us, Allison. And with that, I'm going to kick it over to Kathy. Well, welcome. We are so delighted to uh, introduce uh, uh, Concise Conversations. And we decided to start it really as a way to connect with our network members and friends to share ideas, but also to share a little bit of joy. And we can't be happier than to have Allison as our inaugural guest. You're right about that, Kathy. Uh, it's a real joy always to have a conversation with you and Allison, and I look forward to this one today. I know, Allison, that from the beginning in Athens, you planned to incorporate social emotional learning as an emphasis for both teachers and students as you planned for this distance learning. What if you would share with us some of what you considered and how how you began executing that. Absolutely. Um, we were very fortunate last year in Athens to have had all of our eight uh, schools participate in the Powerful Conversations Network, uh, whereas you all know the focus was on social and emotional learning. Um, that we didn't realize um, how serendipitous that would be because that work has really guided us. Um, it, it was quickly at the forefront of our mind as we began this journey. Um, as a district team, we set out to, um, to think about what, what would be best for our, our faculties and our students. Um, and we, we, we developed a set of essential agreements, as we call them. And um, at the top of that list uh, is the aim of our e-learning uh, platform. And it, and it is to keep students healthy, both physically and emotionally, and to connect to our school community uh, in order to prevent that regression. But we knew that we had to do things for teachers as well. We created some resources, um, uh, a web page uh, where they could go to help them to think about the balance in their lives. Um, and we've really just made that our initial focus, even more so than the academics at this point. Who would have known when we selected uh, social emotional learning that we would really be using it? right now in, in, in ways that we did. So Allison, with your new, the focus on both healthy bodies, healthy academics, keeping the, the learning loss from, from becoming a, a problem, what are some of the, the key findings there? What are some of the key learnings that you're, you're seeing? I think that it, has, that it has been a comfort. I think that's been the first thing, is that this has been a comfort to our families. Um, we, we ask that the learning be manageable and we've asked for feedback every week from our parents and students. And I think that's been a key finding. Uh, we also ask teachers to take care of themselves first, kind of the analogy of the, uh, if you're on the, the airplane and the oxygen mask drops, you know, you have to feed, you have to put your mask on before you can help others. Um, so I think because we've had such affirming results on those surveys and um, grateful uh, teachers, I feel like that has been a, a key finding for us, that we're on the right track. Uh, we're spending time every week listening to them, um, listening to our administrators, our instructional coaches, um, and they're bringing us the concerns of teachers, and we know that you can't create a plan in this type of situation and just go with it. You have to be adaptable. So that would be the second thing. <laughs> Well, Allison, I'm really curious about the survey and uh, whom it's for and, and really what kind of response rate you're getting as well as maybe some of the items that relate to this social emotional side. Sure. Um, we're asking parents each week um, to let us know, you know, was this a manageable week for you? Was the work manageable? Was the workload manageable? We're also asking them, do you feel connected? Uh, does your child feel connected um, to the school classroom and to the school community? And we're putting a focus on those kinds of things. Um, I have some favorites. We've had a wonderful response. Um, 
and our administrators are wonderful. If we if we we have a place there for parents, if they want to be contacted, they can leave their information, and our principals are reaching out to them um, the same day. And I think that's been very comforting as well. Um, but our students have given us a great deal of feedback, and something that that is super interesting that's come of it is when students uh, we have had an, an intermediate school which will be fourth or fifth grade student who said um you know the videos of teachers teaching is that's great but i would really just rather see my teacher teaching and our teachers have responded and have have kind of lost that you know just like today there's that nervous feeling of being on camera but because our students are asking for it they're just stepping up it's just um, we knew we had wonderful people, but it's just been so affirming. You know, it's that human connection that, that you just talked about is, is the students wanting to see their teachers, wanting to see their friends, wanting to just have some type of reassurance that we will get back to the, to the new normal. Well, I know that there have to be some fun things that you've laughed about in a good way. Can you share some of the, the happy moments or funny unexpected moments that have happened since you've moved in this direction? There have been so many happy moments. Um, I even had someone who said to me yesterday, I almost feel guilty about how excited I am about, about the kids and their responses because we don't want to be separate from them, but we see so many good things. Um, at the high school, we had a special needs student who had a birthday last week, and most of the teachers and administration showed up just in the Zoom room just to, just to sing happy birthday. And I can't even think about it without getting teary eyes. It was such a joyful moment. Um, you know, I, um, as I put this on that I was going to be sharing with you all today, one of our teachers who, who I'm sure probably could retire if she chose to, said don't forget to mention that even us old timers are having fun in Zoom and, and talking to her students. So that's been fun to see everyone kind of be energized by their students coming in. I hear that preschool show and tell is fun. I haven't been able to participate just yet, but I can't wait to do so. Um, and just just so many, so many happy moments. I, I couldn't be more proud of the things that are happening. A lot of Snapchat filters where the teachers don't necessarily want their face to be on camera, but they're putting on the, the silly glasses and, and making the, their dog talk, you know, and that kind of thing. So lots of fun things are happening. Uh, and, and back to that data piece, um, where we see those things happening, we're seeing more students show up in classes. So it, it's not only fun and engaging, but it's getting them there for the more academic tasks. Yeah, no surprise. Right. Well, Allison, uh, you said, or I think Kathy said earlier, the students feel so comforted by having that connection with their teachers uh, and it, it brings them in. But I'm also hearing that teachers are missing their students terribly and I'm sure they are getting much comfort from being able to connect with their kids, whether it's through Zoom or I've heard about the parades. Um, oh, you told me about a teddy bear hunt. Oh, that was actually a community thing that the, the uh, lots of our community members put teddy bears out up in their windows. And so parents could take their students out into through neighborhoods and go on a teddy bear hunt around town. That's been a really uniting thing just for our community. Um, we're also we're seeing teachers are getting just as much from these sessions. We really have, uh, for the most part, reserved the Zoom sessions for social and emotional um, because we know that, that they may need to schedule additional Zoom sessions for, um, you know, doing that intervention or, or small group instruction. But there's also that time where students are just coming in and they may get to play Connect Four, you know, on, with, the, with the teacher and the classmates. And there are just so many things that they, they are getting to do that are social. We kind of talked about this in, in the beginning and, and one of our teachers said, if we just bring them in and we don't give them the time to socialize, it's kind of like having a day at school where you have no recess and a silent lunch. Mm -hmm. So we've tried to really be um, intentional about, about those and the teachers are having just as much fun as the students. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's Great. important because we're in here for the, for the long haul. Absolutely. So this morning I was on a webinar with Doug Fisher and Nancy Fry and they were talking about when we get back to school and we will get back to school. 
there, uh, we're going to have to pay a special attention to social and emotional. And also we may have to revisit some routines that are standard. What are you all thinking about as you're thinking about school reimagined when you're actually back, perhaps when we're all back looking at each other rather than on Zoom? I think we're, we've learned so many lessons from this. Uh, yesterday, one of our reflective questions was what are things that you're learning about yourself that you will take forward from this? And so much of that, I think what we've, are finding, Kathy, is that the best things go both ways. Uh, for example, um, some of our, our teachers, they're doing uh, little video lessons and that kind of thing, and some of the routines that were already in place in classrooms, I'm sure you've probably seen the, the classrooms where they have the little sign outside the door, you know, as the students enter, do you want a hug or a fist bump or a high five? Our teachers are doing those same routines in their virtual classrooms. So you might see the teacher at the beginning of the video say, good morning, boys and girls, how about a high five? And they're giving those same. So I think what we're finding is things that build connection go both ways. So it's going to be more, even more important to maintain those connection pieces um, when we do return to face-to-face. And Allison, how are you connecting your teachers one to another? Or are they doing it themselves uh, spontaneously and voluntarily? Or is the district structuring some opportunities? Uh, I think we have, we have both. I would say uh, they do that un unto themselves because we, we um, have teachers who just are, that's just the, their way of being. They are going to reach out and connect. Uh, we're seeing a lot of that on Twitter where there, some, one, one would post one something and another would contact them and say, you know, could you help me with that? Uh, we're structuring our district sessions each week so that each school has the opportunity to share what we're calling an emerging best practice. Uh -huh. Because right now, are there any best practices for this? Well, there are a few. Uh, we've learned through our Athens Renaissance School about some of those and they've been very instrumental. Uh, but we also know that there are several that are emerging like we just talked about with the fist bump or just some of those easy uh, social emotional pieces. Um, so I think a lot of that is being carried over into weekly meetings with staff in our schools um, and we're trying to, to do anything that we do with our administrative team. We're trying to, to think of it in advance as something that could be a model. Um, and then if it's a disaster, we'll say that wasn't a model, <laughs> but, but we're trying really hard on the front end to model what we would hope to see uh, with them. I know a lot of them are doing the same thing at Athens Middle School. I know on Fridays they're sharing a best, an emerging best practice, something that's working, uh, and then putting that out each week. Uh, last week it was, how do you get more kids to show up for, you know, the classwork? And so they talked about some of those things we just talked about, about the funny Zoom or the, the funny videos with the, you know, the tongue twisters or, or flip grid has been another way, any way that we can, can engage them. Um, so I think they're doing that a lot on their own and we're trying to model that from the district level and school level as well. Terrific. Well, Allison, I know that there are going to be some folks that are going to be really interested in learning from you. So I know you've been very willing to share things. So is there a place that they can go to, to find out some of the things that you've done or where could they learn more? They, could, they are always welcome to contact me. Um, we, uh, we use Twitter a great deal in the district. And so if they wanted to contact me on Twitter, my uh, Twitter handle is at Allison, A-L-Y-S-O-N, CARP, C-A-R-P, and the, uh, the numeral one. Um, they're more than willing to reach out to me there. We also have a hashtag in Athens. It's hashtag one, O-N-E, Athens. Uh, so they can find things that teachers are sharing there, but we're always willing to, to, to share. Well, I can't believe how quickly a, a concise conversation uh, happens, nor can I believe how much information can be packed in to a short 15 minutes. Allison, there's so many takeaways from today. One that I have is the importance of community and for creating ways for students to continue to feel, I'm a part of this school, I'm a part of this class, I'm a part of something bigger than I am, just that whole sense of belongingness. And it seems like y'all have really attended to that in Athens. What do you think, Kathy? Well, Jackie, I was really struck by that. And also by what, what Allison said about the things that connect with students can be both virtual and face-to-face. -face. And I think that ought to give us a lot of, of, of comfort and that our, our, our students and um, our teachers are resilient. And um, 
thank thank goodness for that. Allison, thank you so much for being our first guest. Thank yeah. you. I enjoyed it. We awesome. loved it. Took that deep dive together. <laughs> All right, so that was Concise Conversation session one. Um, thank you all for tuning in. We're very excited for the next round of this, which will be next week. And our guest will be Debbie Brooks from Pick Elementary School. And she's gonna be discussing some of the ways that Pick Elementary staff is interacting and communicating with their parents and their students. So make sure you tune in next Friday at one o'clock in the same place and we'll get you some valuable information then. Um, just wanted to thank uh, Allison again for being our first guest. This was a process. Um, this is a new thing for us and there were a lot of kinks to work out. Even today there were some kinks. So thank you for having the courage to be that first guest, Allison. We appreciate it so much. Um, and thank you for tuning in. Um, thank you to all of our viewers for tuning in. We really appreciate it. If you'd like to suggest a topic or be a guest host, email me at dakota at a plus ala.org and we'll see if we can get you on the schedule. We hope everybody has a great weekend. Do something fun. Get out in the wonderful weather that we're supposed to be having. Treat yourself. Y'all have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.